Well, the work we're doing today here is related to SARS-CoV-2 sampling in white-tailed deer. We're doing urban deer control work in the metro area. Any deer that is taken is under the request by individual cities who are experiencing damage from white-tailed deer. It might be increased vehicle deer collision or damage to property. We're already doing the control work for these deer, so it presents an opportunity for us to take samples for SARS-CoV-2 and white-tailed deer. Early on in the pandemic, there was a paper that came out that was showing other than humans might be most susceptible to the COVID virus. And up there pretty high in their predictive list were white-tailed deer. And we were like, why would they be there? And so we said, well, let's, let's test this. And lo and behold, yeah, they were very susceptible and that it multiplied to fairly high numbers within them and they could shed it in such a way that other deer picked it up and could be infected. The primary reason for the research that's being done is to try to understand better what the impact of COVID is on our natural resources such as white-tailed deer. And we're expanding on that to try and understand some of the data scientists are collecting from the field. The work that we're doing locally here is combined with the work that's being done throughout the country and other locations to give us a better understanding of just how widespread it may be in white-tailed deer. Field samples usually consist of nasal swabs, blood, or pieces of tissue. We're trying to determine how long those nasal swabs stay positive in an infected animal so that we know what that means when we get a positive sample in the wild. We've received funding as a part of the uh, ARP or American Rescue Plan to help answer some important research questions concerning SARS-CoV-2 and white-tailed deer. American Rescue Plan has been critical as far as the COVID virus research goes. I mean, we, we wouldn't and couldn't be doing it without those funds. Because it is a very popular game species that's hunted in almost every state. So the implications of that disease becoming more present could impact that as a recreational sport for a lot of hunters throughout the country. All medical fields, whether they be human or veterinary, look at the interface of animals and humans and the environment and to try to figure out whether or not there is some sort of longer or larger impact to both people and the natural resources because of this disease.